Museums are commonly considered places containing items that might be curious, at times interesting, and even of value, but nonetheless, items with nothing to do with daily life. The Metauro Valley is the ideal place in which to discover that a museum is not somewhere dedicated to the preservation of antique items and finds. On the contrary, a museum is a living place, part of an even livelier context, formed by people, places, gestures, and memories that we can touch. The 25th of August, 1944, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, accompanied by Generals Alexander and Lees, arrives in secret at the castle of Montemaggiore, and from behind the walls, he observes the troops lining up, ready for battle. The valley is the same one that was the scene of the Battle of the Metauro in 207 BC, where the death of Hasdrubal sealed the fate of Carthage. 2,000 years later, the same hills are the backdrop for another event that will mark the course of history. The summer of 1944 is a sultry one. Churchill waits for night to fall. He then launches the great attack on the Gothic Line, breaking through Germany's final defense in Italy. The memory of that historical battle is brought back to life in the military items from the period on show at the Winston Churchill Museum inside the ex-church of Santa Maria del Soccorso in Montemaggiore al Metauro. A small underground room with barrel vault and walls finely decorated in relief has been discovered beneath the walls of the castle of Piace. The period of this underground chamber is uncertain, and it is also difficult to get a real idea of its purpose. It might have been used as a shelter or even as a tomb. In any case, the historical roots of this old village are to be found inside it. A museum inside an old house or, in other words, Mina's house is transformed into a museum. This has happened in San Giorgio di Pesaro, where an old house has become a home to a museum that gives an in-depth view of the close ties between local traditions and the environment. An educational approach is used to show the natural aspects of the territory, from the breeding of silkworms to beekeeping. But there is also a rich collection of stuffed animals, and beneath the house, a typical wine cellar where you can taste the area's wines. Once, manual skills were considered a gift of great importance, and an apparently poor raw material such as hemp was in fact the source of a flourishing trade that was able to support an entire town. The town in question is Orciano, and the trade is that of rope maker, once also much in demand by sailors for the rigging of their fishing boats. A visit to the rope museum in Orciano will give you a better view of the forms, swivels, heddles, and other working tools of the many rope makers who made their fortunes here. There is also a large array of different kinds of rope for various uses and, in a separate room, a section dedicated to the memory of the old Orciano brickworks. Of course, there is also a tribute to a famous artist who was born here. Muskets, falcons, ballistas, and mortars. With these weapons, war really does seem something from times past, and yet, Men once fought with them, as you can see in the imposing fortress in Mondavio, one of the most typical and well-preserved buildings to be built by the famous Renaissance architect Francesco di Giorgio Martini. A visit to Mondavio's historical reenactment museum takes visitors on an exciting journey back through time to a period between the 15th and 16th centuries. Old weapons of all types and styles and real war machines. The rich civic museum inside the ex-convent of San Francesco also contains interesting artistic and historical items linked to Mondavio. As well as important paintings from the 17th and 18th centuries, there is also a 17th century tabernacle in walnut and cherry wood with carved inlay work by Fra Liberato of Urbino. Between myth and history, Barchi's museum shows two different aspects that have left a deep impression on the life and imagination of the area. The facts. As far back as the 18th century, many people of Barchi were potters, creating terracotta plates and pots for use in the home. Today, 
This business is widely documented in the Pots and Potters Museum, and anyone visiting the museum can try to make their own pot or souvenir. There is also a narrative aspect. Both admiration and disapproval run through the stories of the many who tell of the bad deeds of the Banda Grossi, a group of local brigands who were the subject of much talk around 1860. Sant'Ippolito is one of the best examples of the elusive nature of art. The museum in the true sense of the word is to be found in the rooms of Palazzo Bracci, set out as a documentation center to provide information about the art of working with sandstone. But the whole town forms another open-air museum, with its narrow streets and old houses decorated by sandstone works dating back to the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries. The local craftsmen also leave their stone masonry workshops open to the public, so that visitors can enter even further into the very heart of the town. And just as in the early 14th century, when Aimonetto da Sant'Ippolito worked on the site of the Palazzo dei Papi, the town is transformed into one large workshop every summer. This happens during Sculpire in Piazza. Fossombrone takes its name from the Roman municipality of Forum Semproni, which for centuries was one of the most influential towns in the middle Metauro Valley. This important past was due to one road, the well-known consular road known as the Flaminian Way. Opened in 220 BC to link Rome to Rimini and the northern regions. Archaeological findings in nearby Tavernelle have brought to light evidence of an ancient farm with taberna, tavern. Other remains found along the Flaminian Way, near Calcinelli, have shown the existence of a mutatio ad octavum, a post station for changing horses. There are many precious finds that link these places to the Romans, and these can be visited at the Vernereci Museum of Archaeology in Fossombrone. A long flight of steps takes the visitor into the prestigious High Court, which is home to the museum documenting the development of the area from prehistoric times to the late Roman period. The Vernereci Gallery is also to be found inside the High Court, this gallery contains paintings from local churches, institutes that have been disbanded or suppressed, and private collections from the 16th to the 19th centuries. But visitors really should not miss the series of works documenting the activity of Fossombrone-born painter Giovan Francesco Guerrieri. Also worthy of great interest is the museum house and picture gallery, donated to the Town Council of Fossombrone by notary Giuseppe Cesarini. The house itself is an important example of the home of a rich, educated, middle-class family. The picture gallery offers first-rate documentation of Italian art in the period between the two world wars, with works by Marini, Messina, Morandi and Severini. There are many pieces by Fossombrone-born artist Anselmo Bucci, who trained in Paris in the early 20th century and went on to become one of the leading figures in Italian art. The ex-parsonage in Castel Gagliardo has become home to a museum that shows weaving as a metaphor for life. A rich collection of photographs illustrates local traditions in terms of the artisan and artistic aspects of weaving, which, until the 1960s, was a common skill in every local family. Many families still weave, and at the museum there is always someone to demonstrate these traditional skills, inviting visitors to try out weaving for themselves. One of Italy's first organic farming concerns was founded in Isola del Piano, at the ex-monastery of Montebello, and it also has a museum dedicated to preserving local history. Exhibits range from old ceramic finds to farming equipment. The Palazzo del Feudatario is the artistic heart of Montefelcino. This imposing building was built in the latter half of the 16th century on behalf of Count Fabio Landriani. 
Inside is an exhibition of contemporary graphic art, alternating artists who are still linked to figurative works with abstract pieces. The collection includes works by Calavalle, Bellagamba, and Piacesi, as well as some of the most important artists from the marches, in particular Anselmo Bucci and Emilio Antonioni. There is a museum inside an elegant home known as Villa del Bali, situated between the hills of Saltara and Cartoceto, where the cast-iron rule of look but don't touch that we learned as children is not to be obeyed. There are interactive stations that give visitors hands-on experience of natural phenomena, such as optical illusions, the paradoxes of mechanics, and the properties of light. This is a place where every opportunity to get involved is developed to the full in a fun route that familiarizes visitors with the laws and theories of science. From here, it is also possible to approach the stars, thanks to a planetarium and a powerful telescope that captures the night sky live. The Villa del Bali Science Center is the second largest in Italy in terms of space and the largest in the Marches region.